David here with Fig Boot on Pins, back again with another review. Today I have for you something out of the ordinary, at least for this channel. It's a unique pen from a company by the name of Soul Built, and it's called the Marksmith. It's not a fountain pen, but a marker, or as the company describes it, it is a bolt action titanium marker. I'll show you what I mean by that here in a bit. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Marksmith, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Soul Built for providing what you will see today for review. So, in order to take a closer look at the pen and the things that come with it, please join me over here at camera two. This is the box it arrives in. Uh, the founder of Soul Built is a gentleman by the name of Daniel Bowen. Uh, in German, Bowen means build, uh, which is appropriate for what his company does and how they came to be named Soul Built. Uh, the company logo, as you can see here, is a hammer and wrench in the shape of a heart. On the side here, it has the name of the pen, the Marksmith. The top flips open. Inside here, we have a couple of things. On the inner flap, it has a QR code, which will take you to the company website uh, for the use and care guide, as well as their store. Um, there is a refill in here. Uh, and, you know, we'll talk about this in a little bit. But I like how uh, the foam insert here, uh, there is an additional uh, space built in for your hand in order to easily extract everything. Um, I kind of like that attention to detail. And here we have the pen. This is the Soul Built Marksmith. Uh, what this is, is a bolt action titanium marker. As that description would imply, it is made from titanium. Um, it is available in a couple of different finishes. There is a polished titanium, then there are two with a DLC black coating. Uh, DLC stands for diamond light coating, which is a strong and durable finish used for lots of applications. Um, this black is available in either a brushed satin finish or a matte. Uh, this one here is the matte. Um, there have already been a couple of Kickstarter campaigns for the Marksmith. Um, I believe there was one for the polished titanium model and then another for the black model. In the fairly near future, the company is planning to have another Kickstarter with the added feature of a rollerball conversion kit, which I'll show you here in a bit. Uh, there's no current date set for the Kickstarter, so it's just something that uh, you'll need to be on the lookout for. Okay, let's take a closer look at this pen. Um, it is rather girthy, which I personally care for. Um, I do like larger pens, and it's not so large that you feel like you're writing with a hot dog. Um, the end here is rounded, uh, and then we have the clip and the bolt, uh, which are one in the same. You know, I really like the style of this clip. You can see it has those two screws. Uh, and I'm really fond of this stair step look here in the back. I think that looks really sharp. Um, if you would like, you could have your name or something like this engraved on the side. Um, I find this to be a very high quality laser engraving that looks really nice. Uh, and it's also smooth to the touch. You really can't even feel it, which in my mind is a good thing. Um, the barrel is straight and then tapers here at the very end. And then there is a hole where the marker will extend. Okay, let's take a look at this bolt mechanism. Um, here you can see the company hammer and wrench heart logo. Um, you simply press down on the clip and then lock it over into place. And you can see here that the tip of the marker extends. Let me do that where you can actually see everything. So you can see the tip of the marker extends. Um, I do like that when the clip locks into place, the name of the company is visible in the space where the pr uh, clip previously occupied. Um, I thought that was a clever design element. Now, there was a couple of areas of concern, uh, one very minor and another one which was a, a slight annoyance. Um, I know it's very difficult to see here. Well, you can actually kind of see it, but when the clip is engaged in the writing position, you can get a look into the inside of the interior chamber and you see what I would describe as kind of a more raw, untreated metal. Um, it's not unsightly, just a little bit raw. Um, it would be a little bit nicer if that was either polished or if it also had the same DLC coating as the exterior. So it would just appear to be like a black void. Uh, that is admittedly being uh, very nitpicky. 
Um, the other issue bugged me a little bit more though. Uh, and that is when, when the tip is extracted, um, or actually when the tip is uh, put away, there's a little bit of play here with the clip. When you pick the pen up, you can hear it rattle around a little bit. Um, now, this is intentional. Now, first of all, when you depress it, then there, it locks into place and it doesn't rattle at all. Um, as I mentioned, this is intentional and I understand the reasoning behind this. Um, I'll show you the cartridge the pen uses here in a minute, but this bolt mechanism needs to have that play in it so it doesn't put pressure on the retractable cartridge, which could potentially cause the protective housing to open up slightly and become exposed to the air and then dry out, which would be a bad thing. Um, the company did try to get ahead of this issue by mentioning it in some of the documentation that comes with the pen. Um, like I said, I can understand the manufacturing and design reasoning behind why it currently needs to be the way it is, uh, but that doesn't mean that as a consumer I need to like it. Um, I'm not an engineer, so I don't have a suggestion as to not have this issue be present. Um, I believe that if there was a spring or something like that here to maintain the tension on that part, it could again put the tip at risk of being exposed to air, which is something you don't want to have happen. We'll go ahead and crack this open. Now I will say that the seam here is incredibly invisible. Um, you might be able to see it here in the stark light, but uh, to the naked eye, you really never see this seam, which is really nice. But you unscrew this and inside you have the cartridge. Now what these are are cartridges used by retractable Sharpie markers. Um, here is a bunch of color options that you could also purchase. Um, these are retractable markers where the ends have been removed in order to access the cartridge inside. Um, then in order to fit them within the marksmith, a very small piece, you can see that's been snipped just a little bit, a small piece of the end needs to be snipped off. Um, if you should purchase replacement cartridges from Soul Built, they will arrive pre-snipped, just like these. But if you purchase uh, retractable Sharpies on your own like this, then you'll need to perform your own minor surgical extraction and brisk yourself on these refills. Um, these are the retractable uh, Sharpies that you would purchase and then actually physically remove the end, and then inside you have the cartridge. This one here is a highlighter. Now, on these refills, there is actually an airtight cap here at the top. Uh, and then when this part is lowered, then you can see that the tip will extend. Now, well, technically the tip is staying in the same place and just this part is retracting, but you get the idea here. I use markers at work on a regular basis. Uh, I mainly use them on sticky notes. Uh, and what I use are Platinum Preppy markers. Um, what I love about them is that you can eyedropper them with fountain pen ink of your choice, and the writing tips are extremely durable, and for me, have literally lasted for years. Um, these units can also be filled with the ink of your choice, but it's a bit more tricky. Um, first of all, you need to get all of the existing ink out of here. Um, if you simply use the cartridge until it's depleted, then uh, most likely the felt tip will not be in the best of shape when you're done. Um, just like any Sharpie marker, they're going to lose some of their crispness over time. Uh, but what you can do is you can, if I get that off of here, uh, open the back of this up uh, and you can actually let it dry out and then you can fill it with the permanent ink of your choice or, if I, or I, as I have done here uh, with some uh, fountain pen ink, which works nicely, um, but it is not as permanent or waterproof as the marker ink would be. Um, and I'll show you how this writes here in a moment. Um, I also mentioned this earlier, but in the fairly near future, there will be another Kickstarter campaign for this pen, which will include the uh, option for a rollerball conversion kit. And this is what this one looks like. It uses a Parker G2 refill and then has these plastic pieces on the end and a spring in order to accommodate this into the housing. So let's go ahead and load this up. And this one you have to kind of finagle it just a little bit more. And get that in there. And as you can see, this actually has a piece that protrudes a little bit through the end. And then we have 
the uh, ball point there, or actually it's a roller ball. And I will say that with that tension with the spring in here, now all of a sudden that this has no play to it because this is a roller ball that doesn't need to uh, uh, be uh, restricted from any airflow. And so uh, you can use this and then there's no uh, rattling to it, but then you have a nice roller ball conversion. Okay, let's take a look at some size comparisons. Um, this is a fairly large pen. First of all, this is just the size comparison to a regular Sharpie pen. Then here it is with a Pilot Vanishing Point. Uh, and then here it is with a Visconti Homo Sapiens. Uh, and then here it is with a pen that I thought looked fairly similar to, which was the uh, Lamy Dialogue 3. And then in regard to some larger pens, here it is with an Edison Collier Grande, and here it is with a Namiki Emperor, and here it is with a Dany Trio Genkai, all of which are very large pens. Okay, wanted to do a quick writing sample. So we have the Mark Smith. by Soul Made. And it writes like a standard Sharpie marker would. Now let's go ahead and trade this out for the one that I filled with fountain pen ink uh, and we'll see how that works. We'll just put this in here. And the ink that I'm using is from Seitz Kreuschnack and it is their Arctic Blue. I just love this bottle. This is one of my favorite uh, bottles and unfortunately I don't believe they're making ink anymore, but this kind of old medicine bottle is one of my favorites for uh, ink. I just think it looks really cool. And then this is what the, this is what the uh, Kreuschnack, you know what, I'm not gonna even attempt to spell Kreuschnack without uh, cheating, but this is, I would say the ink is a little bit nicer for the permanent marker since that's kind of the ink that it's meant to use. But if you went ahead and filled this up with the ink of your choice, uh, it does write well and it does perform well. And so I have a feeling that I'll probably be using this with my ink of my choice. And when it runs out, I might uh, put some different ink in there. The Soul Built Marksmith is available from the Soul Built website and the standard version retails for $119. Uh, this includes two refills uh, and there are options to purchase uh, additional refills from the site or you could pick them up on your own. Um, it's an interesting concept. Uh, I will say the pen is very well built. It feels really great in the hand. Uh, my only really compl real complaint is the, the rattle. Um, it would be nice if the cartridges didn't need to be altered in order to use them as well, but that's a minor fix. Um, the pen feels very solid and works exactly as advertised. If you use a Sharpie on a regular basis, then this is a neat way to jazz it up a bit and get more of a, an upgraded writing experience. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.